Ningguang is an incredibly fun to play character with the looks of a 5 star and a kit that actually has way more than you would expect. Today I will share with you a few hidden ways to play and experience her in combat. And what a better time to talk about her since the addition of a new artifact domain in 4.3 which as we will see is her new best in slot. First tip, her animations are literally RNG and it really impacts the way you attack. Her attacks can be cancelled earlier, but the problem is that she has 3 different normal attack animations, which all have different cancel times. Two are pretty similar, a left hand and a right hand attack, but the third one is a twirl that takes way longer. They also have different timings to follow up with a charge attack. This is honestly the only reason why she is considered clunky to play by many, but personally it just makes her a lot more interesting and hard to master. But anyway, the general approach to your attacks can be to spam click the attack button while holding a movement key. As you can see the difference is quite noticeable and when done perfectly it feels like having a strong attack speed buff. Generally you can use one or two normal attacks into a charge attack, assuming you're willing to stay on field with Ningguang for a prolonged amount of time. With that out of the way, now I want to talk about the elemental skill. As you may know it's considered a solid geo construct, so just like a zonglist pillar if not positioned correctly it will just disappear. This will happen mostly when colliding with big enemies. You don't lose the damage, but it leads to a few problems. First of all, it shouldn't be totally disregarded the fact that the screen has almost as much HP as Ningguang herself. It's extremely situational, but it's still an asset available to her to mitigate damage. Secondly, it removes the option for you to pass through and get her Ascension for talent, which gives her 12% Geo damage. This will be even more relevant when considering her new artifact set, which we will talk about later. Lastly, her burst when cast will fire off 6 gems, but if her screen is up, it will fire 6 more right after, technically doubling the power of her burst. It is important to note however that the damage of these gems coming from her screen gets a snapshot when the skill is used, so ideally you would like your Ningguang to be buffed when casting the skill and not just the burst. Starting a rotation with your skill is ok, but remember to keep this in mind or at worst recast it again before your burst, with all your buffs up. Now another cool tip that could push your team further is keeping in mind that even if thanks to her C2 it's possible to recast the skill right after the screen gets destroyed, it will give you energy again only if 6 seconds are passed. She basically has an internal cooldown on how often she can generate energy via skill, no matter how you reset it. Even Sacrificial Fragment does not circumvent this cooldown, not that you would use that anyway. She generates 3 or 4 particles per cast, so getting the most out of it could be vital in teams that allow her to burst very very often. There are a few ways to position yourself to make sure your screen doesn't get destroyed instantly against a big enemy. You can try to simply stay away enough for it to not get destroyed while still getting the damage in, which is actually much harder than it sounds. You can also just cast it far enough that you're sure it doesn't get destroyed, use it to get your ascension for talent and extra gems on your burst, and finally recast it again for damage. The extra gems generated by your burst will do about double the damage of your skill cost, so it's very much worth it. Of course getting both would be ideal and here we come to an extra way to actually get this done, which is hugging the enemy and facing the other way right before casting the skill. It will usually not destroy, give you the damage and allow you to easily pass through it. Of course this is all mostly for boss encounters. Now it's finally time to talk about our new artifact set, but before we do that, know that I try to keep these videos as short and condensed as possible to not waste your time, so if you're willing to support my work or simply enjoy it, please consider pressing the like or sub button. Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods is a set I talked about in my previous video and it's finally Ningguang's best in slot. It's surely not her set but Navias, but Ningguang ended up having a lot in common with her and this set, even in the worst scenario, is as good if not better than any 2 piece 2 piece option so far. For this set to work, you need to use an elemental skill for 20% geo damage buff and keep a crystallized shield up for an extra 30% geo damage. So the usual Ningguang rotation doesn't change much, starting off with her skill, passing through it and hopefully at the same time picking up a crystallized shield. Right after, using her burst, charge attacks and skill again while keeping the crystal lights up or picking up more as long as possible. That would give her a massive boost in damage not achieved by any other set in the game so far. Yes of course, Mono HOC is viable but only in Furino teams. If you're worried about your crystal lights shield getting instantly destroyed, it is definitely happening especially because Ningguang has one of the lowest defenses in the game, so shields on her are less durable. 
but during a burst, your crystallite shield will not get depleted, so at least that portion of her damage will always get buffed. The set is not ideal to stay on field with for a long time, but it's basically the only option. Plus, staying on field too much is not really Ningguang's best use anyway. Overall, a huge W for Ningguang mains. I briefly talked about it, but let's go through a precise rotation to better visualize how to actually use her. After setting up our teams and buffs, the go-to Ningguang rotation is skill into burst, into skill again if C2 is present, into a charge attack if C6 is present, and then N1C or N2C spam, but this final part only if willing to be on field for more. It's generally not necessary. And to complete the discussion, keep in mind that she prefers rotations that are shorter as her burst is just a 12 seconds cooldown. She loves buffers like Bennett or generally Pyro and or Geo Resonance. Furina is also a very good pair I've been experimenting with that frees you for farming a totally new and specific set. When choosing her artifacts, she technically doesn't have that many options, but aside from the Furina uses and the new set, you would stick to two piece, two piece options. Lava Walker Thunder Suitors are technically usable but incredibly situational, and since her damage comes from so many different sources, we literally have them all, normal, charged, skill and burst, you don't want to use sets like Emblem or Bolide or stuff like that. Weapons will also focus on crit or attack substats, ignore anything with elemental mastery, energy recharge or other stats. Now we get into useless knowledge territory, but fun fact, it's possible to dictate the initial direction of any star jade, which are the gems that can be cast via her charge attacks, that are gained by either C6 or using normal attacks. The timing for your charge attack, if cancelled by a dash and done correctly, can lead to your charge attacks going into one direction and the jades into another, since they are technically not released at the same time. It could be actually useful when trying to focus down a target. One more tip, especially for my fellow mobile players. Characters in Genshin sometimes have ping issues. Ningguang is unfortunately also affected by it. Her Ascension 1 makes it so that when Star Jades are present, her charge attack does not consume stamina. But if the charge attack is performed too fast and the ping is too high, it results in still using that big 50 stamina cost. So if you're wondering why that ever happened to you, now you know. Performing N2C or delaying your charge attack a little bit fixes this issue. Her gaining the Star Jade, however, is also a server side check, which could lead into two Star Jades instead of one from a single normal attack. That happens if they don't hit at exactly the same time or the ping is also pretty high. And that was all I had to share about Ningguang today. I love day one characters. They're so broken in a way and have so many cool little details about them. Anyway, if you want to see me playing her live, join us every day on twitch.tv slash 7evenplease. Have a great day and I will see you in the next one.